So here's the thing. What I'm about to show you is something you're almost certain never to buy. It's outrageously priced, designed and specified. Is there any point in me going through the Xiaomi Mi Mix Pro, aka the 18 karat gold premium edition? You bet there is. If only because phones have been getting closer to this Star Trek like form factor for years. Just as the original Samsung Galaxy Nexus, here it is, it looks tiny now to this, but this appalled us in 2011 with a giant 4.7 inch screen, a vision of the future from Google. The Mi Mix here with a screen that almost touches the edges on three sides with a 6.4 inch display and a form factor smaller than my six inch screen phablets. Here's the HP Elite X3. This is a clear indication of where things are going and we now know where they'll end up. We saw it on Star Trek Next Generation 20 years ago on TV. There's only one problem. Xiaomi conceived this to look beautiful, feel beautiful and with zero thought as to real world usability. And I'm not talking about the missing earpiece, the relocated front camera or even the minimal bezels. The Mi Mix used as is as a usability nightmare because it's polished ceramic, top to toe, front to back and edge to edge. It slides off every apparent flat surface, every resting place. It never feels secure in the hand. And I found myself <coughs> having to artificially wedge it on desks and kitchen surfaces. Otherwise, it will be on the floor in no time again. Is the Mi Mix durable enough to fend for itself? Well, not really. Ceramic is a heat hardened compound that's a cousin of glass, but obviously not transparent. It's extremely hard and scratch resistant, but also very brittle, meaning that when the Mi Mix is dropped onto a hard surface, then this outer casing will shatter into a hundred pieces. And so will the display, since shocks are transmitted directly through the phone and its display. I'm going to brace it now. This isn't the only phone to be made of ceramic, of course. The OnePlus X had similar ideas, but the polished finish all over is its downfall here. A case is not only recommended, it's absolutely de rigueur. And thankfully, a basic case is supplied in the box, although it wasn't with my review sample. But it all makes a complete mockery of putting so much attention to arty design into the material since no one will ever see them. <laughs> Even the owner of the phone. It beggars belief. But let's put materials to one side and assume that you'll be using a case 24-7. Is the Mi Mix's unique selling point, its 6.4 inch display in the body of a 5.7 inch screen phone remarkable enough to warrant a recommendation to buy from me? Well, almost. It very much depends on where you live in the world. The core specifications are mightily impressive. A Snapdragon 821 chipset with six gigabytes of RAM, of which over four gig is available after booting, means that everything flies. With a whopping 256 gigabytes of internal storage, meaning that you'll never, ever run short on capacity, however many 4K videos you shoot. The Qualcomm chipset also means that the Mi Mix can come with Quick Charge 3.0, fast charging over USB Type-C. Though you have to source your own mains accessory here, you only get a cable in the box, which is a bit of a, a cheap option, I think. Charging is indeed fast from my own kit, though even at up to 12 volts, the large 4400 milliamp hour battery here will take a couple of hours to fill. But equally, that kind of capacity means that you'll never run out of power before the end of the day, however large the display, helped by this only being, well, 1080p. 1080p? Some mistake, surely, on a 6.4 inch screen? Well, actually, no. Obviously, at a premium price point for 2017, you'd expect Quad HD, but to my eyes, an IPS LCD panel looks crisp, even at 1080p. This is a full RGB stripe, unlike on all the AMOLED screened phones out there. And yes, Having fewer pixels to push around reduces the power drain when the Mi Mix Pro is in use. With no space above the giant screen, the earpiece and proximity sensor have been moved underneath the display glass and they work just fine. Admittedly, the piezo electric speaker, though aimed outwards at your ear, also transmits sound through the phone generally, so others around you hear your caller's voice substantially more than on a traditional handset, and this may be an issue for potential buyers on privacy grounds. Also moved is the front camera. Now, 
here positioned down at the bottom of the phone. Though in use, it's restored the top because there's an animation prompting you to turn the phone upside down and then you're off to the races. It's a little clumsy and you can still make video calls with the camera at the bottom, but don't expect your eye line to make sense to the other party. Down at the very bottom is the traditional iPhone 6 layout of two speaker grills, the left of which is a cosmetic dummy and the right of which is a quite a decent mono loudspeaker. Here's a demonstration at full volume. RIP George Michael. It's not terrible. It's not massively loud though. It's up with the iPhones and the best of the handsets which don't have full front mounted stereo speakers but it's backed up, I guess I have to say, by stunningly good audio output from the 3.5mm headphone jack on the top and in fairness you couldn't really have stereo speakers with no bezel at the top. Around the back is another familiar layout with camera glass, dual LED and a fingerprint sensor with the main two openings inlaid with 18 karat gold, this being the top of the line Mi Mix 18K. There's also a version without the gold with less RAM and less storage for $300 less. The camera is interesting in that it's not quite as premium as the rest of the handset. This is absolutely understandable given the physics involved. Xiaomi wanted an 8mm thick ceramic obelisk <laughs> without anything protruding like a camera hump. So the camera glass here actually gets to be recessed into the back for protection purposes, giving around 5mm of internal thickness at most for a 16 megapixel camera, something as you can imagine has got to give. And uh, we have the classic one third of an inch optical format sensor with one micron pixels, i.e. pretty small, with no OIS and wide angle optics. In good light conditions, results are more than acceptable, but in artificial and low light, it all goes somewhat to pot. This may not be an issue for potential buyers of such a halo form factor, mind you. Just don't buy this for the camera. Video recording is at 4K and even at 1080p, there's no digital stabilization, which seems like an omission, given the immense processing power inside. Maybe something for Xiaomi to add in an update. Talking of which, this is the new MIUI Global 8.0 on top of Android 6.0.1, though I understand a version based on Nugget or Nougat is imminent. Xiaomi do issue updates to their various phones, though as an international customer rather than a Chinese native, you're somewhat at the mercy of the status of each firmware, depending on where you bought it from. The review device was originally bought from geekbuying.com and arrived with English and other world languages and with the Google Play Store installed, which means that I was then able to seek out and install every other Google application which you'd normally find on an Android handset. As to quite how official this build is in terms of eligibility for Xiaomi OS updates and patches, it's hard to say at this stage. I'm optimistic, but you don't get the warm, fuzzy feeling here that you might get from the likes of Google itself, HTC or Samsung, for example. Perhaps partly demonstrating the pitfalls of buying phones with modified operating system builds, the Mi Mix had a setup bug which saw it not letting me set my location as in the UK or USA, the two locales which often get separated off at the head of an English language list of countries, since they're the most common. Presumably the team in charge of compiling this international build of MIUI had intended to do this and then simply forgot. So I've had the phone pretending I was physically in Spain. Not that it matters much in terms of setting up the cellular radio since the European LTE band 20 is nowhere to be seen here. You get bands 1 through 8 and 38 through 41 and that's your lot. With a few exceptions, many European users will have to make do with 3G bands only for calls and data. In the fullness of time, perhaps Xiaomi will generate a genuine world edition of this Mi Mix hardware. You do get a Wi-Fi to AC and 5 gigahertz support plus NFC, thankfully, so it's not all bad news. And there are also two nano SIM slots, giving some flexibility when traveling around the world. Now, MIUI comes with an entire raft of Xiaomi built-in applications, of course. Some useful, though some also becoming rather redundant once I'd installed the Google original, so contacts, calendar, photos, maps, and so on. And the Xiaomi applications can't be uninstalled, unfortunately, so you have to hide them in a suitable home screen folder in the usual way. There's no app drawer here, so everything lives on the home screens. This isn't a huge issue, though it does make for quite a bit of setup time for the experienced user who knows what they want to see and who wants the real Google first-party applications. 
Otherwise, this is a fairly standard Android setup with virtual control. And yes, you can swap which side the back control is on in settings, thankfully. In fact, you can also swipe away the controls altogether if you want to within a specific application for absolute maximum screen real estate, just as a Windows 10 mobile. Most of the time, this isn't needed, not least because the screen itself is an unusual 17 to 9 aspect ratio, meaning that you can fit in a 1080p game or video image in theory, plus controls with no content missing. Software permitting, that is the uh, 2080 by 1080 pixel screen, doesn't have universal app and game support yet. At the bottom left of the controls is a small dot. Tapping this brings up the so-called quick ball onto the user interface. This can be dragged around as needed and offers customizable shortcuts by default home menu lock screenshot and back, but I quickly got reassigning with clock, torch, Android Pay and so on. Quick ball is MIUI's biggest indulgence and it's not terrible. I can see myself using it sometimes, a five shortcut splay from one tap, though that semi-transparent ball here hovering away did annoy me from time to time. Nice touches in MIUI 8 include being able to swipe down the notifications and quick setting shade with a gesture from anywhere, or you don't have to start from the top of the screen, which is a really nice touch. This helps enormously. As usual with Chinese Android OS versions, there's a supplied security suite here with a disk cleaner and antivirus scanner. Oh heck, why not? If you're, if you're going to use modified Chinese ROMs in the first place, better safe than sorry, right? Finally, Xiaomi has put in a really nice slide under system for moving applications between home screens. Just tap and hold an icon with one finger and then slide the home screens underneath like a conveyor belt, releasing when you get to the spot where you want to drop the icon. This should really make it back into the Google mothership code, in my opinion. The Xiaomi Mi Mix is a gorgeous to look at and once configured superb to use foam with high spec components throughout, camera accepting for space reasons. As unique selling points go, having almost zero bezels on three sides comes pretty high on the list. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see more and more smartphones come with similar designs in 2017. Imagine a phone with a 5.5 inch display in the body of what normally has is a five inch screen. <laughs> oh wait, hang on, such a Mimix Nano is already rumored from Xiaomi, but they won't be alone here. All I'm asking apart from a properly thought out world edition in terms of updates, bands and regions, is that the polished ceramic finish here be dialed down somehow. Smartphones don't need to also be works of art, you know.